Got it. Meet in the last room on the right at the end of the hallway. 
Next Sunday, July 31st, the trustees will meet following worship. If you can volunteer to water the co-op garden once a week in the morning or early evening, please let Emily know. Also, Eliza Penfield has put out a call for gardening tools, new or used. You can bring them to the big basket in the foyer. And a garden hose holder is one of the main things needed. Also, our water day that was originally scheduled for next weekend has been canceled at this time. So if you will, stand as you're able and join us in singing song number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Christ, you have been brought to fullness. 
He is the head over every power and authority. Thanks be to God for this holy word.
comment to Kathy was helpful in this. Jesus' disciples observed Jesus praying in a certain place. We read that he would go up on a mountain or a hillside or away by himself. They wanted to know more about this praying. And this prayer has been handed down from disciple to disciple to disciple to church and so on. Several years ago, some of you may remember that I did a sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. And it was then that we began to use the modern version of the Lord's Prayer where we have taken out the these and thou's, um, which makes those of us who have been saying the prayer our whole life sometimes look at the words to make sure we're in unison. But this series took a deep dive on both the particular words that are used and like categories of how we pray or what we pray for. So I'm just going to run through these. So we like begin addressing God, we begin with addressing God and, and giving praise and thanksgiving. And I believe it doesn't matter if we say our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, or gracious God, we give you praise for loving us. So this version in Luke follows up that, that address of God and praise with your kingdom come. If you read it in the Gospel of Matthew, it continues with your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The, the overarching meaning of all of that is that we should look for God's ways over our ways, that, that God's will is our perspective our priority, the kingdom come, God's will be done. Then give us each day our daily bread, like the manna in the wilderness. Provide for us, God, one day at a time. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who, who sin against us or who are indebted to us. And prayer is confession, forgiveness, releasing someone from um, the debt they owe you or asking to be released. Prayer is seeking reconciliation. And lead us not into temptation or do not bring us to the time of trial. Again, we want to be reconciled with God, seeking the kingdom, God's will, and not being in a place where we are moved towards sin or separation or evil. So this is like an overview of how to pray or what to pray for, ways that we connect with God through words and actions. Then Luke leads us right into an action of prayer and perseverance in prayer. He gives us this vignette of someone knocking on their friend's door at night needing some bread. And the friend explains that he's already in bed and it would be a pain to get up. Probably because he has children laying all over the floor on pallets, which would be how they did it. They didn't have like a separate bedroom usually. They would just all lay out on pallets in the house. And there's no light switch to turn on either. The house is closed for the night. Go away, friend. I'm not getting up. But after a beat, the friend thinks about the perseverance of his friend in need. And of course, he gets up, he lights the lamp, he finds the bread, he steps over sleeping children and gives them what they ask for. And God will do the same. So keep praying, keep connecting, keep seeking. A couple of months ago, after the, the mass shootings in Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas, I 
after that fatal shooting in our parking lot, I came to the place where I had no more words for God. Um, I had tears, had plenty of those, had confusion, I had silence. But I couldn't put any words together. Not of praise or thanksgiving or confession or fear or need. I just didn't have anything to say. And this was weird for me because since seminary and Bishop Cannon, I've been able to pray aloud, and to pray in my heart and my head, and to pray at someone's bedside. And and to pray as I write my prayers for the week. When I was at Highlands, somebody asked me to compile my pastoral prayers because they found them so inspiring. But now I had no words. And I knew this was okay for Emily, for me, but it was troublesome for me, Pastor Emily, leaving this congregation. A couple of weeks later, I read this devotional in the upper room. You know, the upper room booklets that we get can also get them by email. And this is, they're written by people from all over the world. This is a man writing this. Just as the world was shutting down due to COVID-19, I learned that I had aggressive prostate cancer that required immediate surgery. Fear overwhelmed me. I wondered if I could even receive treatment in the midst of a pandemic. The prayers of friends lifted me, yet my own praying was, in the words of Franciscan Richard Rohr, both constant and impossible. In late afternoons during my days of waiting, I walked by the river and along tree-lined streets near my home. I babbled my prayers, but soon I ran out of words. Finally, I prayed, Father, I have no more words. Please let my steps be prayers and my breath be praise. I remembered how Paul wrote that the Spirit prays with us and for us when we can manage only groans and sighs. My anxiety did not disappear, but I began to see beyond it as I walked and breathed. My mind became calm as it no longer grasped for words. I began to see and hear the birds along the river. I noticed the sunlight through the trees. I saw other people walking, no doubt bearing burdens of their own. Eventually, I had successful surgery and I give thanks for the caring doctors, nurses, and other dedicated healthcare workers. Most of all, I give thanks for God's spirit that sustains. And I continue to pray, sometimes with words. I had no words, but I could walk. No words, but I could breathe and deeply. No words, but I had been groaning and sighing a lot. So this is what I needed to hear. Just moving forward. Just each step at a time could be a prayer. And some days that has been my connection with God. Sitting in a in the chair with my coffee in the morning, just breathing deep. Or I will come in here and kind of do laps around the sanctuary. It's not that I don't have anything to pray, like I don't have anything to be forgiven for. Of course I do, or be thankful for. I mean, Deborah received her transplant during this time. But walking and breathing and sighing has been my means of prayer. And I believe that God knows. I mean, sometimes I feel the connection better with God than when I am using words. So in this way, I've been able to persevere in prayer. Keep 
keep knocking on the door, keep seeking and connecting. Don't let anybody tell you, not even a bishop, that you are praying wrong or praying right. I mean, there just is not one way. The Lord's Prayer is can be like a template if that's what you're looking for. A reminder of what God wants to hear from us and has for us our daily bread. That, that day that Kathy prayed in my seminary class was the only time that that class prayed aloud together. And you know, that has power. And that's one reason why we pray the Lord's Prayer every week together, because it's powerful. Not because it's going to get us into heaven, but we're saying it together, and confessing together, and hoping together, and connecting together. But sometimes we use objects in our prayers, and I put some of these objects out on our altar today. And we use scripture, and there's some placards that have scripture on them. There's some note cards, because sometimes we write our prayers. There's a finger labyrinth. Um, there's crosses to hold and, and meditate on. And so during our intercessory prayer today, Instead of me praying aloud on your behalf, I want us to all find a way to connect with God and, and to lift up our wants and needs and confessions and gratitudes. If you can use anything on this altar, I put some prayer books on the chair up here, or you may want to join me to walk around the gym. I'm going to give you more instruction when it's time. What is so very important in our, our prayer life, which is our faith life, which is our, our life with God, which is our life, is the perseverance to find ways to connect with God. That is what prayer is, connection with God. It may or may not use words. Our seeking, knocking, steps forward, deep sighs, these are all means of connecting with the one who has given us breath and movement, the one who has sought and opens the door, no matter what we need or what we brought with us. Thanks be to God for accepting us, connecting us, and loving us. Amen. I ask that you stand if you're able and join us in singing hymn number 405, Seek Ye First. <laughs>
So we're, we're going to have our time of, of intercessory prayer today where we usually lift up our wants and needs and everything. I want to share with you that Carolyn Henshaw has finally been received into a clinical trial after many times of trying. And so we're, we're celebrating that with her. I'm going to pray for um, Chris Ogle's brother, Glenn, who, who has prostate cancer and others that we've been in prayer for. We're going to have some time of silence besides our beeping that I'm trying to call the Holy Spirit <laughs> so that it won't bother me so much. Um, but just, we're just going to have some time. I'll, I'll tell you because people get anxious about the time. It's going to be like five to seven minutes. Um, you can come up and get anything off the altar. Um, there's some pens around if you do want to write. There are prayer books. Um, there's an altar altar railing here. If you want to kneel, you can kind of walk with me. You can also just sit where you are and breathe deeply or sigh or groan. Any of that's that's good. So may we pray.
Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, power, and the glory are yours forever. As we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, I ask that the ushers come forward. which we give in humble gratitude. You have listened to us when we've prayed, and often we have been far more ready to ask than to listen for your answer. You know every need and every want. Loving God, like a parent, you love us enough to not answer every request, but to give instead that which will lead us to those choices which will bring lasting joy. So help us fill every breath with gratitude. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
23, Saranam, Saranam, which means um, refuge. Thank you. 